Well, to dissect what the prosecution is telling the jury, I have two amazing, fabulous, experienced lawyers you're only find here on the Long Crime Network. I'd first like to introduce, first time on our network, Professor Belina Beatty. Belina, how are you? You are a professor in Arizona. You have done, your resume is, is precedes you. Innocence work, uh, wrongful conviction work. You were a professor, and you know my good friend Peter Newfeld through your innocence work, sort of uh, in a roundabout way. Um, how are you? And thank you for coming on, and we'll talk more about your work. But I have one specific question for you. The prosecution said the defense couldn't argue to the jury that the jury had sympathy for the mother of, of Markeith Lloyd and the, and the daughter and the granddaughter. But doesn't that fall into, in a roundabout way, the, the catch-all factor that Florida has that anything in the background could the jury can use to say, I don't want to put the man to death? Right, exactly, exactly. It it can be that totality of circumstances that the jury is looking at. And I, I think to uh, say that the jury can't consider it, they're going to be thinking about that. They're going to be reflecting on this as well. And it can be part of the totality of what they're looking at when they're making this decision. Yeah. And, and uh, Elizabeth Crotty, let me introduce you. Liz, you are from New Jersey, but you were at the Ma Manhattan DA's office, right? I, I'm actually a native New Yorker. I'm you born are. And somebody in told you. Somebody gave me no. misinformation. It's okay. I can still cross examine or examine on the. Uh, yes, yeah. but I was but, in the Manhattan DA's office for, for six years. For six years. And you've tried a number of cases, and you have a view on death penalty cases, which is what? I am not for the death penalty. Even in, back in law school, I worked for New Yorkers against the death penalty before it was abolished in 2006. So I don't think generally. Generally, the death penalty is, is the way to go in any case. I'm happy it's not a factor here in New York. I think that this case is very sad in the sense that the, the, whether or not he was fit to stand trial is a different story, but he did, it did seem the evidence showed significant mental trauma throughout his whole life. And I think a diagnosis of schizophrenia, so that I think that if the verdict came back so quickly, I would hope that it's, it's in the favor of the defendant. Yes, there was a diagnosis that he was psychotic. Well, let's listen to more of what the prosecution said to the jury earlier today in an attempt to get them to vote for death. You know, so when I was a prosecutor, Liz, okay, and I was being taught as a prosecutor, my bosses used to say, well, you know, here's the statement. Even uh, old-time Western bad guy, Jesse James, not the, not the new one, but the old guy, <laughs> had a mother. So, so what? He's got a nice family. But the fact that his family, he did have a nice family and he was interacting with them, is that helpful to him or hurtful? I think it's... it's I think you go either way. You can argue both ways. I think in this case where you have clear documented mental illness and, and psychosis, you had a family who supported him and who don't want him to die. And, and I think that if that makes it harder for the jury to say, hey, this guy has a family, he has roots in the community, there's a lot of people who are going to be upset if he, if he, if he gets put to death. I think there are extenuating factors with mental health here that I think that it will come into play. In guilt or innocence, it doesn't matter whether you have a mom because we all have a mom. But I think when it comes to mentally capable to stand trial and whether you should be put to death or life in prison, I think that, that your mom does, definitely comes into play. So Professor Valina Bita, let me read to you the mitigating factor in Florida that the, in a capital case. If the felony was committed according to it under the influence of extreme mental or emotional disturbance, disturbance does the fact that he is so good to his daughter to his granddaughter, that he could interact with his family so well, they loved him, and he seemed so normal. Doesn't that maybe hurt? Well, going back to the earlier point, he's he's not normal. Uh, I mean, the fact that it was a question of whether he could even be competent to stand trial in this case shows how big of a factor that is. And while this can be a mitigating factor, I mean, this whole case is about the penalty stage. It's all about whether he's going to get the death penalty or not. And again, as was said earlier, it's completely different when you're looking at guilt. But when you're looking at the penalty, you take into consideration all of these factors factors. Uh, so, and again, it could go either way for him, that it makes him seem like someone who shouldn't be put to death. On the other hand, uh, maybe it throws into question his sanity. I think his sanity is definitely in question. Well, we're going to find out at 1230, but right now, stay with us. We're going to take one of those quick commercial breaks, and we'll be back to listen to what the defense attorney said to the jury to try to save his client's life. Okay, that's penalty, death penalty certified lawyer Terry Linham trying to save his client's life. Uh, Elizabeth Liz Crotty, who former DA, here there was some indication that according to 
Markeith Lloyd himself, that there was another medical issue about whether or not he had organic brain damage in his head, in his brain, that uh, the defense attorney, according to Markeith Lloyd, may have gotten to the judge uh, or the other side too late. He wanted it for the jury. I don't know if it's true or not. It's what Markeith Lloyd <laughs> said. It could be true. Maybe maybe not. Uh, maybe it's how he what he thinks. Uh, but if there is organic brain injury, is it? And wouldn't that be an important factor, you would think, for people to hear? Yes, and I don't think it would come out just in the death penalty teach part of the case. I think that would have been, there would be an, a proper foundation for it. Uh, there would be a medical expert. It would lead to, you know, uh, an opinion, an expert opinion testimony about how the injury had occurred and what the result of that injury was. So I think if without the proper foundation, maybe that's the reason why the judge didn't let it in. It's definitely, if, if it's because it's late, I do believe that is definitely an appealable basis, as with so many different aspects of yeah. a, a death penalty. And Professor Valina Beatty, um, I was asking you during the break that you had established a principle of quorum nobis as a post-conviction relief. You're going to shortly tell us what that is. But in that, when you tell us, could you also tell us if there is some kind of uh, organic brain injury that was not present or presented before this jury, would that be a grounds for appeal? Absolutely. Everything that Liz just said, that this is vital, not just to the penalty stage, but to the guilt stage, means this is going to be the first issue brought up on appeal. Uh, it's going to be ineffective assistance of counsel. That's going to be the claim. It's going to be the first thing the attorneys bring up on appeal. And the appeals for this case, if he receives the death penalty, are going to extend for years. Okay. Let's go back and remember Mark Keith Lloyd when he took the stand. Liz Crotty, he took the stand and he said they were going to kill me. She, you know, I, I, she didn't say she wasn't going to shoot me. I mean, she came down with the gun. In his mind, even assuming nothing of that was true, it appeared that that's what he believed. And what the diagnosis said is that he's delusional and psychotic, and that's what he believed. Well, I mean, I think in every criminal case that goes to trial, you always have three stories. You have the victim story, the defendant stories, and the police officer story. And, and the job is to put them all together and see which one, which of all three of the stories makes the most sense. That's really how you prosecute and defend a case. I think with Marquis Lloyd, they have a bit of a problem because the defendant believes his side of the story is true. It's a common occurrence amongst defense attorneys to sometimes you know, if the people of their, are in their right mind to break that down a little bit. And, and Valina, we have about 30 seconds left. If the jury thinks he is psychotic but dangerous, does that help him on the mitigating factors that hurt him, in your opinion? I think it helps him because his other alternative here is life in prison until he dies. That keeps the public safe. Uh, and I think it actually would help him in this situation. Okay, so guess what? We're going to have to take a quick break because on the other side of it, we hope that the judge will have everybody in the courtroom because we do have, and you heard it here first, a breaking, a verdict in the penalty phase of Mark Keith Lloyd where the jury is going to come back and decide. They deliberated under an hour. Does he live? Does he die? Does he live? Does he die? All 12 of them have to make an individual decision on their own. It's not like the regular guilt verdict. So stay with us here at the Walk and Crime. On the other side, the Markeith Lloyd penalty verdict is resolved. <laughs>